shout out goes out to our current channel members. If you were interested in picking up a channel membership for as little as $1.99 a month, head over to my channel profile and hit the join button to view all of the available perks. Thanks. Before we begin with today's video, I would just like to announce that there is a Ninjago themed advent calendar event going on. It is completely fan made and it is happening over on the Keepers of Spinjitzu website, which I will link down below in the description. So if that does sound like something you're interested in, please do check out the link in the very top of the description and go and check it out. It's going to be awesome. Thanks. Hello there and welcome for a brand new video on the channel. Why does the community seem to have an obsession with Klaus? If it wasn't for recent events that we will be getting on to a little later in this video, this question may seem a little bit outdated and things would be a lot more retrospective. However, as I say, along with recent events, Klaus has been a fairly big subject of discussion within the community once more. Which really does bring the question forward, what is the obsession with Klaus? To clear something up first though, the quote-unquote recent event I was just talking about was the new Ninjago set pictures. The villains, to be specific. There is actually a new theory going around, believe it or not, that suggests they are connected to Klaus. Crazy, I know, but it's a theory that's been thrown out there. In fact, it's such a big thing that I may have to make a whole separate video just discussing that. Aside from this though, it would seem as though ever since the Dark Island Trilogy, a story written by Tommy Andreasen that ties up a few loose ends, including Klaus, where he gets sent to the Underworld, Klaus has been brought up pretty regularly ever since. Most notably that being in Season 13. Leading up to the unveiling of the Skull Sorcerer, a lot of people were making theories and predictions that Klaus would be behind the mask of the Skull Sorcerer. This was kind of even backed up officially too, as the face prints for the Skull Sorcerer appearing in the set definitely did resemble a black version of Klaus, almost as if maybe he had been taken over by the magic, the dark magic used in the underworld. But then things died down. But as I say at the beginning, it's been brought up again recently with these new bone-like villains coming in the new Core Wave. To be honest with you though, I think the obsession with Klaus comes from the fact that he has such an open, loose end just waiting to be tied back up. You know what I mean? His return is right there, just waiting to happen. We know he's in the Underworld right now, and the Underworld was definitely a pretty prominent place within Ninjago. It's one of the realms we've seen the most of. We know he's kind of there, we just don't know what he's doing there. And I think that fact alone, and just knowing that, completely builds up the hype and anticipation around Klaus, which I believe is the main driving factor and reasoning as to why he does get so much hype to begin with. I think that if we didn't know he was in the Underworld, just waiting there to be used again in the future, if we didn't know that, I do not think Klaus would have as much hype as he currently does now, you know? People wouldn't be talking about him as much, and people wouldn't want him to return as much. But the fact that he is literally sitting in such a familiar place with Ninjago fans in the underworld, of course, I think that brings about so much more hype, and it makes people want to know, well, what's next? And I think it's definitely a plot point that the writers could utilise in the future, for sure. They have such an endless amount of possibilities to do with Klaus, since he is just sitting in the underworld, ready to be utilised in the future. And I think it's only a matter of time before perhaps we see something with Klaus. Maybe not as the main villain, though. Not, too, not necessarily sure Klaus would work as a main villain of a season, but definitely as a side villain or something like that. Something similar to that, at least. Yeah, I think that could be awesome. Again, though, I would love to see Klaus's return and find out what he's been up to no matter what shape or form that comes in, just seeing more of him and maybe how he is controlling the Skullkin army now, I think all of that would just be fantastic. But with all of this being said, that is just about going to conclude it for this one here. So be sure to drop your own thoughts down below on this in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you enjoyed today's video here, be sure to leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel for more, and hit the notification bell so that you can be the first to watch my new videos whenever I do post them. With all of this being said, though, I'll see you all soon for my next one. Goodbye.